what's going on? Wait, what was this? What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made these beautiful, buttery, lobstery, squishy, New Englandy homemade lobster rolls. Coming up! Lobster rolls! Everybody loves a good lobster roll. And just like in Texas where there's little shacks on the side of the road in every small town slanging BBQ, here in the Northeast, those shacks are serving seafood and lobster rolls. And though they stay pretty traditional, it kind of varies from county to county, but today we're gonna make some lobster rolls and they are going to be delicious. As you can probably tell, I am no longer in Austin, Texas. I have ventured back to the beautiful land of New Hampshire, to my childhood home. And where briskets may be scarce, there are plenty of these little guys. Look at that shiny new Weber, Dad. Ooh. Look at all the fresh basil. <laughs> nice tomatoes. What do you think, Josephine? You want some lobsters? You've never had a lobster roll? I don't know. I think I've had one. That's really, really hot. <laughs> Look how shiny these grates are. It's really nice that it's not 300 degrees outside right now. What do you got there, Dad? Big pot of water. Big pot of water. Big pot of water. Now on this beautiful September day in New Hampshire, we're gonna let this water come up to a boil. It's about yay high, because we are gonna steam these bad Larrys to save time and save some water. This water appears to be up to a boil. All right, in they go. <laughs> We're gonna let these steam for about 10 minutes till they're nice and cooked. We'll see how they look. I do feel kind of bad for these lobsters, so one for the homies. While these lobsters steam away, we're gonna get a little ice bath ready so we can shock them. It's gonna help in the peeling process. Brooke, what's your favorite sea bug? Tramp. I think I prefer lobsters. Well, you're in the right place at your own home. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, mom, I tell you. It's a beautiful day in Lebanon, New Hampshire. 10 minutes is up and these are looking real. Oh, that's hot. Looking real nice. Nice and rosy red. Oh, how you doing? Yeah, real nice deep red color. Oh, you know it's nicely cooked. Into the ice bath they go. All right, so these lobsters are nicely chilled. And again, the chilling just makes them a little easier to work with, as well as kind of helping them detach from the skins, much like a hard boiled egg, or so I've heard. Now I want you to show me how you break down a lobster. I start with the claws, take the rubber band off, break the thumb off, always check for missing pieces. Ooh. Break the knuckles. Oh. And you were saying these are particularly hard shell, soft shell lobsters? Well, they molt in the spring. So the later in the fall you get the soft shells, but the later in the fall, the harder they get. First thing in the spring, they're almost impossible to crack. When did you have your first uh, lobster of the season? I think it was April. Ow. A little piece of cartilage right in here you gotta get out, because if you bite on that, it really isn't very pleasant. Ooh. Oh, that smells heavenly. We'll make sure it's good. Got taste it, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, that's so good. I'm supposed to do that over the shell bowl, bro. Yeah, I'm realizing that now. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right, knuckle. Knuckle head. I've never made a video with this much quiet around. <laughs> Carl. Mm. There it is. <laughs> On to the bodies. Yes, over the over the thing. Over the bowl. Are you a, a twist and pull kind of guy? No, I just sort of bend it backwards. Okay. Very nice. Ooh, that one had a lot of liquid. Juicy. What I do is I pull the little flippers off the back. Sometimes there's meat in them. And then, because they're soft shell, you can stick your fingers in and push the tail out the front. That doesn't work on a hard shell because the meat is way too tight to the shell. And what you got to do is peel this back part. Revealing the anus? Well, yeah, the vein, they call it. Venus. Get that out of there. The old poop track. Done. Beautiful. I've also seen people that'll just kind of yeah. make a mess of the whole backyard. <laughs> but look at that. Well, that's a manly way to do it. Oh God, that is a turdy lobster. Well, you got the ice water there. You can rinse it off. Too. Lob's turd over here. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to go the real extra mile, a lot of people swear by this leg meat. I saw a neat little trick the other day that you can bust out like a rolling pin or something or an unopened local brew. 
and just kind of roll the meat out. Let's see if it works. Yeah, a little piece of meat. That does work well. Adds up after a while. Might as well get, get all the meat you can. Oh, you gotta hit this. <laughs> all right, we are keeping this grill hot. Excuse me. Can I help you all with something? <laughs> fire is burning hot. Time to get some butter melting. Onto the fire it goes. We are going to add one full pound of regular salted butter. Boop, 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 boop. While we wait for this butter to melt, we are gonna get a nice little rough chop on these bigger pieces, just so we have a more pleasant bite experience in these lobster rolls. Nothing too fine, we're not trying to dice it or anything, but you don't want a whole claw falling out into your beard. Beautiful. So we're just bringing this up to a boil. We're trying to cook out all of the water just to help concentrate that extra buttery flavor. You could also take it a step further and toast the milk cells, get a really nice brown butter, add some wonderful flavors. I'm not trying to do that, but I don't know, we'll see what happens. We are simply going to put in our nice chilled lobster and that is going to accomplish one of two things. Well, two of two things. One, it's gonna add some wonderful buttery flavor to our lobster, as well as adding some wonderful lobstery flavor to our butter. Beep! In it goes. Oh my God, it smells so good! So when it comes to traditional lobster rolls, there's a few different variations you're gonna come across depending on what part of New England you are in. There's the camp that says you need mayonnaise with your lobster roll, kind of like a lobster salad situation. Other people think it should be served warm with some butter on top, just lobster and butter, but everyone agrees on the same thing, that it needs to be served on a split top New England style hot dog bun. And as for preparation, I can't really decide whether I like mayonnaise or butter better. So today we're gonna do a combination of the two by making our own butter infused mayonnaise, AKA hollandaise sauce. And it just so happens we've got our own lobster infused butter right here and it's gonna come out super tasty. So to get our hollandaise started, we are going to crack some eggs into a bowl here. Five eggs to be precise. <laughs> then we are gonna separate the yolks from the whites. Oh, I cracked one. Into the blender they go. It's okay if you uh, get a little whites in there. Having some whites in your yolks is not as big of a problem as having some yolks in your whites if you're making a meringue or something. While we're at it, we're also gonna chop up some tarragon here. And that's just gonna add some nice flavor. In it goes. Whoop. We are also going to add in a little bit of lemon juice, a nice cheek of lemon, if you will. Pinch of salt, some freshly cracked black pepper. We are gonna pull out this delicious looking lobster meat that has been poaching in this hot butter. Dad, are you corn shucking over there? I am. You corn shucking son of a bitch. <laughs> and if we leave a few little extra pieces in there, it's just gonna make our hollandaise that much better. So, I'm gonna put this back on and bring it up to a boil. We've got ourselves some beauteous split top hot dog buns. Not looking for anything classy here, folks. This is what a lobster roll is all about. And the nice part about these is that you can get a really nice toast on this side with some nice butter, perhaps some lobster infused butter. We're gonna throw these right on the grill. Just a little bit of lobster butter. Oh, ooh. Have I missed anything? <laughs> so we have got our lobster butter right off of the pit. It is still just below a boil. So we're gonna get this blended up and we're gonna slowly drizzle in our hot butter. The heat from the butter is going to cook the eggs and it is going to make a beautiful emulsified sauce. Oh, it's getting nice and thick. Get all those lobster chunks in there. We've got ourselves a beautiful, nice, thick lobster infused hollandaise. So we're gonna go into this here squirty squirt bottle just for ease of application. Very nice. <laughs> All right, let's make some lobster rolls. Assembly, could not be easier. Nice and soft on the inside still, gotta love it. We're just gonna fill these bad boys as much as we want. A lot of places down here will overstuff them, which is kind of a tradition. Oh yes, oh God, it smells so good. And of course, gotta do a nice little topper drizz of our lobster infused hollandaise. Butter and mayonnaise in the happiest of marriages, folks. Oh, and it may not be traditional, but <laughs> it's gonna look really good on camera. A little bit of chives. Everyone likes a little bit of color. Gotta have that garnish, right, Dad? Mm. <laughs> 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 
All right, family, would you like to try some lobster rolls? Please. Yes. I know you two have been eating them all summer, most likely, but now we can do it together. I'm falling. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mm -hmm. mm. That's good. Buttery. Lobstery. Oh. Mm. Tender. That hollandaise is great. Lobster Benedicts. I think that definitely mm. needs to happen. Mm hmm. It's delicious. It's so good. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right, y'all, and that is it. That is my version of how to make a lobster roll. I highly recommend giving this one a try. And if you can get your hands on whole lobsters, this would work just as well with lobster tails or make one hell of a shrimp roll. But something about that hollandaise, the richness, the acidity, with that little bit of tarragon in there works so well with seafood, and you definitely got to check this one out. But if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Head over to chudsbbq.com for all pit inquiries, pricings, wait lists, all that good stuff. Head over to Instagram. If you do give this a try, I am at chudsbbq. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Let me know in the comments below what you want to see me cook next. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace! Yeah. <laughs>